So this is a presentation about web form module. The titles, there's, there's this for that. And uh, the best explanation is I'm trying to build a good rhythm to go through a lot of material. And you'll see this, this is the pattern of the whole deck. Um, I'm going to start off with just a, an introduction. Uh, my name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal development software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. And this is a tricky slide because I'm starting off with a negative. I need to do this so that I can get to this and say, you know, I'm going to focus on something. And what I'm not going to talk about is like the history of the web form module, installing it. I hope people know how to install modules. Even the alternatives. It's, this is about web forms. Even going into the future of the web form module. And this tricky thing of theming and styling. I'm not going to get into it. And I'm not going to get heavily into just managing the submissions coming in. Because wh what this is really, what I'm after is talking about building awesome forms and helping everyone get familiar with that aspect of the web form module, because it is called the web form module. Um, and the first question we've got to start with is, like, how do you build forms in Drupal? Well, there's the web form module for that. And this is the quick summary. is The web form module is a powerful and flexible open source form builder and submission manager for Drupal 8. And I like this kind of breakdown of it is it provides all the features expected from an enterprise proprietary form builder combined with the flexibility and openness of Drupal. To me, the most important part of this is the flexibility and openness to Drupal. When you start using the module, there's lots of possibilities. And if you know Drupal, there's lots of possibilities. And you can alter and manipulate anything you're seeing here. Everything is customizable and it's open. And you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and I like just these slides are kind of for me to set the stage. This is a form. This is a web form. It's a contact form. And the web form module, this is the web form builder, and this is the user interface around it. And this is the source, and I'm going to show you how this kind of works, behind the web form. And the last part is this is a submission, the data coming in. And the use case for the web form module, I break it down into, you know, you're going to build a form or copy a template. You're going to publish this form on your site as a page note or block. You're going to collect form submissions and send confirmations and notifications, which typically is email. And you need a way to review these results online. And ultimately, then you need to distribute them. And typically, in Drupal 7, you download them as a CSV. And something that's evolved in the Drupal community is you also want to remote post this data to an outside API, like a CRM. Um, and I break it down really simply. It's build, collect, distribute. We are going to focus mostly on the build side of things, but it's worth noting the collecting of the submission and the distributing of it. And I will show some of that. And I'm going to give you a quick demo because this is like my elevator pitch. This is like the fast, this is what the web form module does, and then we're going to break down the parts. So this is the UI, it's installed. I'm going to close these, these messages, they're dismissible. You actually can build dismissible messages. And this is the contact form we just started, I just showed you. And what I like doing. It's just start out, let's say we want to add a company field. I'm going to go to add a company. There are a lot of features, and you don't need to customize everything. What I like doing for this demo is just to show you some of the ways you can do help text. So this is help text. And something you have to do with every module you install is experiment with it and read more. And say this is more text. I'm not going to go through the other ones. I'll open them quickly while we're going through, but you can control any aspect of how a form element is displayed, and you get into a lot of validation nuances. I'm going to hit Add. I'm going to preview it for you. And it's at the bottom. And I add all these descriptions just to show you the flexibility. You wouldn't do all of these at once. It just depends on the type of form you're building, but you can have a read more. What I like about the read more is if you have a lot of help text, it's the best way to display a huge body of help text. To continue forward, like, I added this company field. There's some problems with it. Is it's at the bottom. It should say your company. It should be required. And this is a really good opportunity to show you how the source mode works, which is basically just lets you edit the form as plain text. And it really shows you how it's working. And I'm going to quickly demo it by taking that field and moving it up to where I want it, which is under your company, uh, your name. I'm going to change it to your company. And you can see all the properties are there. And actually, I don't really want these anymore, so I'm going to take them out. But I do need to make it required, so I'm going to copy over the required part. I'm going to hit Save. And I'm going to go over to View. Now we have your company at the top. Something I want to just move into is just show you a little bit of the layout capabilities, because I think it just helps people start wrapping their head around the flexibility of building. Is there support for Flexbox, which is a CSS3 standard for multi-column layout. 
and you can add a flexbox element, which is a container. Just going to quickly add it. It goes to the bottom, but I'm going to bring it up to the top. I'm going to move the, your name and your company under it. I'm also going to just, just, just kind of I like. I, there's an element I like is the horizontal rule because it's it just gets into showing you what the design capabilities are, and these are this is the fault. So I'm going to add a dotted line, and actually I'd like to make it thick so that you can see it really nicely. I'm going to go up, and I'm going to move over to the test tab because that's another feature of the module. And you can see, oh, I made the mistake of not moving it up, but I'll just do. And keep in mind, I'm just using core out-of-the-box styles for Bardic. If you actually have Bootstrap, you get a whole bunch of capabilities if you set this up right. But I've got a nice multi-column, you know, laying it out twice, a little divider here. And there's a test tab that'll pre-fill out the form, and you have control over this data. I'm gonna submit it. There it goes through. And now this is where I'm going to dive into the back end a little bit of managing submissions just to show you how it works. So you can go into results, you can see your results, you can customize this layout, and there's the preview of it. And you have the ability to edit it, add notes to it, you could resend it, and then you go over to the results tab. And I want to emphasize you can start it. Locking is really for when you're done with the submission, you can lock it to stop anyone from editing it. And this is the only time I'm going to really show you how you can download, which is pretty standard in D7 where you can generate a spreadsheet. What I like to, to demo is to show you a table and export it. I'm checking this box so you can see it on screen. And there's a quick preview of the export. Now, I'm going to continue forward. Sorry, I need to do a sip. That's the elevator pitch. Well, there's a lot to wrap your head around. So how do you discover what the Webform module can do? Uh, there are examples for that. And the Webform module provides examples and demos. They're actually modules that you can turn on and off that can be used as a starting point for building forms and applications. There are examples and demos of every type of element, so you can see everything on screen. There's an example of a multi-step form, so you can kind of get the idea of how to lay it out and how to get it to work, and the examples of conditional logic. And there's even a form that shows you, how, how, how would you put it, every possibility you might want to do with a Flexbox layout. And there are examples of building complex applications like an event registration system or an application evaluation system. And the key th example that I, everyone should look at and probably use on their projects is there is an example of a style guide, and it's very helpful. It's completely customizable. It shows you every element, and it's really good for a project with a lot of design requirements where you can hand this off to your designer and have them style it and have them look at every form and how it's working. And for example, when I turn on a theme, I always go to this example style guide and look at the form and see what, how it's working, and I actually test a few features. So I'm going to just quickly show you that style guide. Let's go up here. So this is the kitchen sink. This is every most features turned on. It's showing you the progress bar. It's really helpful for your designer to understand what they can change. They can change anything, but what's there out of the box. Start off with basic elements. And by the way, you're, get, you're seeing everything here. Check boxes, radios. Now we get into date elements, customizable international <coughs> phone numbers. Now we're going to get into file uploads, table selects, cute kittens that you can select and enhance. Which I kind of like. And your signature, which I have found this to be one of the most useful elements that I didn't expect it to be, but it's really important for certain use cases where you need to grab someone's signature, rating elements. And now we're getting into Likerts for, for surveys, and any references everyone should be familiar with, and that's actually supported by the Webform module, so can, you can point to the content on your site. <laughs> and then there's something called composite fields, which is very similar to like, um, the, I forgot, now I'm stuck blanking on that field module. Uh, com Sorry, paragraphs, what's, what was before paragraphs? Paragraphs or field collection. Field, field collection, that was what I was losing. So these are like field collections, so you can build an ad, basically you can build an address element. And then you can do locations, and this is really, this is the section where your designer would understand how your forms are going to lay out, how it's going to look when it's required or not, and how the school tips are going to work. And there's all the nice horizontal rules and styling for your messages that you can use. Um, Flexbox, I'm going to quickly show it to you and then not go too further into it, but it really, you should go through all of these examples. You should always turn on the module. Sorry, I went to the wrong one. Flex. There it is. Really shows you the capability of doing multi column <coughs> layouts, and it is responsive, and we'll go to one column. Moving on. So, how do you start building forms? What's a good starting point? Well, there are templates for that. And there's a module, the Webform Temp module, which will enable, and it gives you templates, which are forms that can be copied to create new forms. And templates are just reusable forms. Um, 
A form created from a template is a copy. So once you take a template and select it and start building, that goes off and becomes its own form and you can actually go back and make changes to your template and it won't affect the form that you started. Um, and that's a really important feature. And yes, this is just a web form template. And the demo is pretty simple because you can go up and this is a module you turn on and it comes with these default templates which you can customize, you can delete. Um, I like to, I'll preview a more advanced one like a job application and just gives you an example of how you might want to capture a resume with a little conditional logic so that someone could cut and paste in. And the one I like to do for this is just a little, here's the, um, the feedback form. I'm going to select it. It'll jump over to it, view it. It's very similar to a contact form, but I like using this for some later parts of the demo. It's a contact form with basically asking what type of feedback are you giving us. Um, moving on. So how do you build awesome forms? There are elements for that, and we've got to define what elements are. So a form is a collection of elements, which includes inputs, composites, containers, and pages that are used to collect a submission. Um, it's really important to say that everything in Drupal is pretty much an element. Anything you see on a screen starts out as an element. Um, form, that's why I use the word element, because an input is an element. So an input is just something that collects a value. Um, composites is a group of inputs working together to collect a value, the example being an address. And containers and pages are really important to start understanding is container just holds a bunch of sub-elements together, like a detailed widget or a field set. You can even just put a bunch of elements in a div, and that's a container, and that's supported. And then you can add conditional logic to that single container. And multi-step forms, the pages are containers. Um, and they contain the forms for each page. So there are many different types of elements. I'm just you know, giving you kind of the overview, the breakdown. This just helps you know when you're starting to navigate through that you can start grasping the different types. I mean, one thing I don't go heavily into in this presentation is there's computed elements. You've got to look at those and experiment with. And I kind of want to step back and just give you like the anatomy of a form element. So when you're looking at form elements and starting to use them, I'm kind of breaking down these groupings where you know there's a general definition where you're giving a name of the a title of the element, the name of the element, what it's going to be stored in in the database cardinality, whether you're taking multiple values, the default value. I did show you that stuff that starts happening with the labeling, where you can add the description, help text, and more. And every element also supports prefixes, suffixes, the size, you can add input mass, validation, there's all variations, I mean the common one is required, unique patterns and counters, and conditional logic. Access, I'm not going to go heavily, but you can set access rules to each element, so you can have elements only for admins or only for certain types of users. And then there's an advanced tab where you get into all the, the ability to basically customize any visual aspect of a form element when it's being rendered. Um, this is the web form element edit form, let me show it to you. Conditional logic, where you can kind of set high and show rules on when that element should be displayed. And then these are get, gets into the advanced settings, where you can kind of add, add customize the CSS classes, styles, and even the physical attributes going into the element or the wrapper. Um, I use the attributes for doing, like Google tagging and stuff like that. And the types of inputs, and people should be familiar with these, so I'm just gonna quickly walk through them. You know, you can have a text field, which is just like text field, text area, HTML editor. Options, that's kind of what, how you would do check boxes, radios, and select menus, and that cute kittens, the images, are kind of like options. And then there's file uploads, and we do break them down into different types of file uploads. It's kind of helpful to have a video file upload, because then you can open up a camcorder or record on your phone with that. Um, and those more fancy, cute little widgets, like the rating, signature, and phone number I call widgets. And then there are entity references where you can reference content on your site. Um, containers. There's a basic container, which is just a div. Section, which is really just an HTML5 spec to kind of define a section of content. What's nice about sections is you get a header and it just groups them together. And field set details people are pretty familiar with and Flexbox is being used for multi -com. Um Composites, there's the liker, there's location, address, contact, links, names, and you can build your own custom composites for your project so you can decide what, what type of elements. I mean the classic example if you're doing like airline booking and you need to say passenger, you need to do a passenger manifest element, you could do that. The name of the person, the age, and stuff like that. Um, and I did show you the side guide, but you can preview all the elements in the UI while you're navigating through. So I'm just going to give you that quick demo of it. So I'll stick to this one. Um, if I hit add element, 
Start to look very simple, but you can, and you can filter very quickly to get to a field, but I want to back up and turn on the preview. And you can get a quick preview of all these elements. It slows you down a little bit because you are looking at a lot of markup right now. But I can go and filter. I'm going to do a phone number. And I'll just do a very basic phone number. Let's get it right. Phone. I'm not going to do the international stuff right now. I'm going to hit save. Add it. And you know, the previous demo kind of shows you this stuff just works, which is nice to <laughs> say. Um, as we move on, I'll show you a lot of elements. I think it's really important that you try out all the elements and look at them and experiment with them and get familiar with them. Everything's pretty standard, like you've seen them on forms and they're just available in the web form module. Um, so now we've really built our forms. We're talking about how you get to building forms. And once you've built that form, you've got to decide what the form's doing when someone hits submit. And it's how do you send emails or, and push data to a CRM? And there's a handler for that. And that's the, they're plugins. And these are plugins that you can use to basically send email or do a remote post. And let me go, so handlers are used to route submitted data to applications and send email notifications and pretty much any, a lot of other things. So yeah, email notification, confirmation, push data. These are better examples where you can do subscribing to mailing lists. Um, someone actually has written a web form um, MailChimp module where you can subscribe someone to a MailChimp mailing list and someone did a s simple mail or I forget the name of the Drupal s email list manager module. And you can even get some type, s certain types of like rules-based behavior. So when someone submits a form you can conditionally flag a submission if they enter a certain value, or the other one that's come up is conditionally change the confirmation message based on what they've entered. Um, so this is kind of a breakdown of the handlers that ship out of the box. You have email. Scheduled email is the same as email, but you can not have the email go out immediately when someone fills out the form. You can wait and have it sent out at a certain timetable. It's very useful for event registration where you have people register for an event and you want to send an email a day before the event to remind them that they registered. Um, remote post, I'm going to demo. It's basically taking that data and pushing it to a remote server. And actions and settings are those things where you can kind of conditionally tweak little behaviors of the form. Um, and then there's a debug one, which it's just helpful to see what's going on with all the data. And every handler that I've built in the module has a debug, so you can see what's going on, especially if it's not working. And I'll demo it. Uh, let's go, we can use this form. I'm going to show you the email handler because there's some that ship out of the box. What I also like, so this is a feedback form where we've asked for the type of feedback. So this handler has a little bit of a nuance to it, is I'm sending email, I'm routing it based on the type of feedback someone's giving us, and you can send it to different email addresses based on that one field. So it's kind of conditional routing. You can do conditional logic and create like five different emails based on what they filled out in the form, but this is a very quick way to kind of send the email to who, who needs to respond to it. Um, what I'm going to do is add a remote post handler, and I have to squint to get to the URL. So I'm going to I'm going to use this URL. It's going to be broken, which is okay. Uh, quickly walk you through it. It sends all the data in your form. You control that, but you can also add custom data like API keys. Um, if I go down to submission data, you can check off. So by default, it just sends the form elements. You can send all your metadata with it, which uh, it's not a problem to do. Important thing I need to do is I need to turn on the debugging so you can see it fail. Um, some other things is you can do a post or a get. You can do it as just own. You can have custom data. This is a very rich feature where you can add stuff to the header of the request and that gets you into some, you can do some authentication. For advanced developers in the room, if you need to do OAuth, you need to extend this handler and put your OAuth authentication in your own plugin. Um, so I've turned it on, I have debugging enabled. I'm gonna go over to the test tab, which will just fill this out quickly. And it's gonna fail. I got a nice big red box because it didn't process it. But that's where the debugger is pretty helpful because it's showing you this is the data that's going out, how the data is structured, and we happen to be hitting CloudFront, which is obviously not happy that we're posting data to it. Um, but it gives you a good starting point. So people are using this for, CRM integration is a big one. I use it for Salesforce integration. I know Mark, there's also, People are starting to write modules to do the integration to help you out. I know there's one for Marketo that's coming out. So there's a plugin to take the data and push it to Marketo and it handles a lot of the 
the business logic that you need to do. Um, we're good on time. Okay, so how do you tweak and adjust the behavior and look and feel of your web forms? Well, there are settings for that. And this is a really important thing to wrap your head around because there's a ton of features in the web form module, but the web form module shifts with reasonable default settings, but everything is customizable. When you turn the module on, it works. You don't have to tweak every message. You can. You should understand how to do it. Your client's going to ask you some question. Can we change that message? You can do it. Um, and this slide is really important because it just gives you some orientation to how settings are broken down on a form. And I spent a lot of time on this because I'm trying to get a logic here where, yes, you have your general settings where you're putting your name of the form. Then you get into your form setting, little nuances like validation logic, how you want that to work. And then you have your submissions coming through, how you're managing those. And when you finally someone submits the form, it gets into a confirmation page or a redirect. And then we're t we've talked about emails and handlers. And then you can also inject custom CSS and JavaScript into your form, which I am going to demo. And you can also, once again, have full access controls to your form to decide who can submit the form, who can view the submissions, who can update their own submission, all the different attributes on who can get to that form. And this is just a quick overview of these tabs where general settings, you can, you can even disable the saving of results. So the data, this is a really important feature where if you're using a CRM, you could have the data never hit Drupal. It, it doesn't even, it goes onto the server and then just sent off to a remote server. This is where you would check off whether you want to use a web form as a template. You can customize the URLs. You can turn on AJAX support for forms. And then third-party settings usually go in the general tab. And a lot of them are tied to spam protection, which is like honeypot and antibot. Um, and then when you get to form settings, yes, you can set dates, timetables, when the form's going to open and close. You can customize every label and message you see anywhere, anyhow. I mean, there's like seven, there's hundreds of messages that are all customizable. Um, you can set up pre-population behavior so that you can pass parameters in the query string. You can tweak your wizards and how you want the progress bar to look, and then you can also enable previews. Submissions, you also get into, while you're getting submissions, the labeling, the messages, how you're handling it. Because people can actually save drafts of their submission, and then when they come back, there's a message that's displayed. You saved a draft, how would you like to proceed? Um, there's also this automated purging of submissions. Uh, that feature is really tied to, you can turn on a lot of behaviors for anonymous users, and they can actually save drafts. Sometimes you want to purge those drafts after six months so that you don't fill up your database with useless information. And a new feature that just got added, which I'm kind of, I, I had to do for a client, is autofilling a form with a previous submission. So if someone's doing an order form, they send it, they submit it. When they come back to that order form, especially if they're authenticated, it'll pre-fill out the order form and you can pick which fields. Usually you pick the contact, not the order, but the contact information. It just saves them a little time. It's a nice feature. Um, and then we get to confirmations. Every possible type of confirmation you could imagine is supported, including popping up modal dialogues, redirecting status messages. Um, and this is a really important feature that I use a lot, is you can customize the CSS and JavaScript as a form's rendering, because forms are really complex, and there's little nuances, no matter how good your designer is, that you have some form and you're like, I need to adjust this element. There's something off with the margins, the padding. I need the font size. Even with the JavaScript, it's really for custom conditional logic. You, there's some cases you can't build a UI for the conditional logic that a client wants with JavaScript. And, like You just have to go into the JavaScript to write it. You just can't build a UI for it. And access controls we've touched upon, this is where this is all the stuff. Basically, you can control all the CRUD operations that someone can do. And you can also give a single user administrative rights to the entire form. And I'm going to just demo look and feel, because I think this is a really important thing that people get a peek at. And what I like to do is, OK. So this is the breakdown. I'm going to jump over to the CSS. So this is a funny problem. When I've ever, Every time I did this demo, I had to stutter for I, I paused for a second. And What's the right selector for the web form submission? So I added this last week as I was preparing the slide. So this is this, so the form tag that gets rendered. This is the CSS class that is on every form. If you add, ah, oh, if you add this selector before your statements, you're in good shape. So now I could do something like label. And I actually did this demo, and I realized I had a little interesting there. So font size, I'm going to make all the labels bigger, 1.5m. And I realized when I did the demo, because the specific CSS specificity battles, 
that I had needed to use the important tag, attribute. And it's not a bad thing to do because really this is your last moment where you're going to alter a form. So you should feel free to use important in this. I'm going to actually copy this. So we're doing a label. And I like to just do input, background color, yellow. That's a good start. And there's your JavaScript. And let's go to the form. And we made it nice and bigger. And we have started manipulating things. And you can get crazy with this. I mean, I use it for, if you have tables, you need to tweak the column layout. That CSS is really useful for like, especially the Likert element where you need to push things around. I'm going to keep going. So this is a big question. Should you, <laughs> should you customize everything? Should you customize nothing? Um, these are just some tips for managing your settings and behaviors. With everything in Drupal, you need to know what's possible and kind of what's impossible, what you just can't get to. I mean, nothing's impossible in Drupal. It's how difficult is the task of writing a custom code to fix it. And even though I do all this complex stuff, I always am reminded to you know, keep it simple, stupid. Like, just get the job done and then go gradually iterate through your, your, what you're building and then make it a little more complex. Don't, I see people getting, building ridiculously complex forms off the start and it's better to start simple, gradually build it out and figure out how you want to proceed. And some little developer tips is um, you can write hooks to define default settings. So when someone hits create form, you can go in and say, you know what, every form on my site needs to be AJAX enabled, so I'm going to turn on AJAX for every form. And templates are really useful because those default settings from templates are copied. And if you have really basic users that aren't going to be able to figure out the settings, you can give them templates that give them the best, you know, here's the multi-step wizard template with all the right behaviors and settings turned on off the bat. Um, so we've only talked about web form settings, like specific, and how can you change global default <coughs> settings? Well, there's configuration for that. And there's a nuance here. Settings are for the web form and configuration is for everything. And you start to see how, I'll explain that even more as I go on, but configuration to find the default features functionality and behaviors available to all your web forms. This is an important slide. This stuff you need to walk away with and remember when you're, get, you're starting to use the web form module is these are things that always need to be configured. Some of them need to always need to be configured on your site. And it's private file access for file uploads, especially for anonymous users. You have to turn that on. You basically, yeah, that's when you go to turn on the setting, it'll actually give you the security analysis of what the problem is and help explain why you have to do this. Another big one for forms is spam protection, and that's not built into the module. You have to go out and get one of three options, which are CAPTCHA, Honeypot, and Antibot, and install one of those modules so that you have some spam protection. Also, I, I think you've seen that there's a ton of elements available, and I doubt any person is going to use all those elements on your site you should probably go in and look at those elements and turn off the ones you don't need. Or turn off the ones you don't think you need and then turn them on later on, especially when new users are coming in and getting familiar with the module. You don't need to have every element of it. And you do need some API keys for certain elements like that map we just peeked at. There's integration with Google Maps, so you need the API key to set that up. And reusable options is just important to be aware of, and I'm going to demo it, but these are like for select menus, if you're letting someone select country, there's a list of options of countries, and you should just review it and decide if that's the right. If you need that for your site, sometimes you should delete a lot of the options, and I will demo it. And this is another familiar slide. This is when you get into configuration. It's trying to also break down the pattern of how forms work, which is you're defining forms that contain elements. And in those elements, like a select menu, you'll have options. And then we're kind of jumping to someone hits submit. By the way, I'm doing this. It helps you get familiar with all, it's a lot of settings to wrap your head around. Someone submits it, you have your submissions, and then that submission gets handled. And when I did the CSV exporter, I did that demo, that's an exporter, that's how that data is coming out. And finally, the web form module requires a lot of libraries to do all those nice enhancements. And you should look at the libraries that are installed and you can customize them. And then we get, of course, into advanced settings. And I'm gonna really focus on quickly looking at the elements, options, and libraries. I'm going to go back over. So, by the way, the, uh, the reason it's called configuration is that's how Drupal thinks of global settings, is configuration. So click the configuration tab. I'm just showing you on elements this idea that, yes, you can, by the way, this is, 
you can control what classes are available to your element. If you're using Bootstrap, you can enter different classes that are very specific. Um, that horizontal rule I talked about, these are all the classes available to style different horizontal rules, and you can go customize them. Uh, most sites, if they have a really nice theme, they should go into here and start thinking about these classes and change them. Um, you can get, this is the API key. What I'd like to do is show you, so down here is where you can control every single element available. If you don't want people uploading files, turn off the file upload element. I guess that, that's what I need to add to this deck. Is, but yeah, you can turn off file upload, and I think it's really important to do. If you don't need the feature, don't, don't, don't even have it available. Um, jumping over to options, so this, once I show this to you, you start to understand what options are. So this is where, if you're creating a select menu and you want to do days of a week, this defines the values that would go into days of a week. So I can click edit. And there's our days of a week. And this is translatable because it's Drupal 8, which is amazing. Um, but I, and I'm, by the way, this, when you turn on the module, there's, I have all the different types of options, like demographic options that you can work with. You can delete most of these if you're not using them, but they're good starting points. They're pretty much standard stuff that I've pulled from a lot of different resources. Um, and then you get into all the country codes and languages, country names, and just show you the list. I think it's important to also note this is editable as YAML which makes it really quick to fill these in and out. I've seen people like build these ridiculously fast because they have a spreadsheet and they just cut and paste it in. Um, jumping back up, so by the way, everything you can turn on and off on, even the handlers that I just demoed, I'm kind of jumping to this because I just it emphasize you can turn on and off the handlers you don't need. Um, but libraries also has that same thing, and this is important, is you can add global CSS and JavaScript to all your forms and it gets loaded with it. So if there's some nuance, I had a designer, like, there's some minor issue with the front end theme and I didn't have the energy to contact the designer and have them tweak it, so I just added a little global tweak to all the form CSS just to get it to work. And you can build libraries in here. I mean, keep in mind, the best way to do CSS and JavaScript is to put it in your theme layer. And sometimes, you know, you don't want to do this, but it's a nice feature. And you can turn on and off all these external libraries if you don't need a feature. Um, a great example is that the Webflow module, I like Select2, Core hopefully will go with Select2, but you can choose chosen library. And just a quick, Select2 is just a way to make multiple, select menus of multiple options not suck. <laughs> There's no other, it makes it usable. It makes it easy to select your values. Um, I'm gonna keep going. So, the takeaway here is there's a configuration for that. That's like a little mantra in the web format where I, I keep realizing that I've just built it this way, that you can tweak anything. And there still is. What if you can't configure something via the user interface? And this is a Drupal thing. This is, there's a module hook or template for that. I mean, basically everything you need to do, you can get to and tweak it. Um, so, we're going to switch gears and talk about now we've kind of built forms, managed the forms. How do you place the form on your site? Um, well, there are web form blocks for that, to place a form. And people are familiar with blocks. Um, web form blocks are blocks that just display a web form. And they just make it easy to include a web form within you know, layouts and, and panels. They allow a, a web form to be placed anywhere. And you can attach it to any page on your site. And you know, people are pretty familiar with the block UI. And I'm gonna give you a quick demo of it. I'm gonna use the contact form. So if I go up to structure, block layout, sidebar second, go to web form, contact. And con you can actually also pass default values into the form, so when you're placing it, you could default fill out hidden fields, visible fields. And what's great about blocks is you can control all the visibility. For now, we're just going to place it everywhere on the site. It's placed. I'm going to go here. So we now have our nice little form. This is on the home page. I'm going to fill it out because I want to kind of demo a feature that I'll, I'm going to keep reinforcing. So I've done it on the home page. I'm going to go in and do it here on this node that just was randomly generated. Hit submit. Now I'm going to jump over to the results tab. Whoop. That's the configure tab. Let's see if I can get that off. There it is. Results. So, a, a feature of the web form module for Drupal is it tracks where the form is being submitted from. So, the first submission we went directly to the page that the web form's on that tracked that. 
the home page doesn't really have a URL or an entity to it, so it's not really tracking that, but you'll notice that when I went to that node, it tracked the node that it was submitted from. So right now, this form that I put on every page of the site is tracking the feedback on a specific page. So it almost becomes like give us feedback on every page on the site and you know where they are when they're submitting it. And you're gonna see a little more of that in a second. Um, because now we're getting to how do you fully integrate a web form into your site? Uh, there are web form nodes for that. And web form nodes are nodes with the w a web form field, it's an entity reference field attached. And the web form node module provides, when you turn on this module, the web form node module, it does create a web form content type for you. You can delete that content type and you can attach web forms to any content on your site. And what happens when you attach a web form field to your node is it starts tracking node specific submissions. Um, and when it does that, it turns on a test tab on the node and it also has a results tab. And we're gonna get to show that to you, I'm gonna show it to you and you'll get more from it. And the other thing that happens with the web form node module is every web form that you've created will have a references tab. And what it's doing is tracking what nodes that web form is used on. Um, it also makes it really easy to add web form nodes to your site. So. This is just, the, I just include the slide to be like, it's a field. You're adding a field to a content type. It's the web form field type. And this is just some tips and tricks as we're going into, because I'm not going to demo it, but it's very important. When you attach a web form to a node, you get a relationship. And tokens are really useful for exposing relationships, because you can take information from your <laughs> node and pass it to your web form. For example, if you had an event and you're putting a registration form attached to that event node, you can pass that metadata, like the event name, the date, to the web form using tokens. And this is just an example. You can even have a field that sets a confirmation message. Um, there's also support for computed elements, which also allow you to take node values and display it. And I'm actually including a screenshot because there's a lot of support for tokens where you can get access to any piece of information of your web form, your web form submission, and you can display it on a confirmation or in your emails. And I'm going to give you a little demo of the web form nodes. So we're on our contact form. I'm going to jump up. And this is the references tab that I talked about. So there's no references. Um, these are the two content types I have on the site that support nodes being uh, web forms being attached to the node. And I'm going to click Add. And what's nice about this is it's pre-filling it out. It, I don't have to do anything else. It, it said, OK, here's a contact form. Of course, you can customize it. But it pre-filled out. We're doing a contact web form node, which is a good way to say it. You can also schedule when this web form node is displayed. I'll just show you the setting. Hit save. I'm going to do that demo. I'm actually, for this demo, I can leave the block there. So we have our web form <coughs> node. I'm going to hit the test tab. I'm going to hit send. I'm going to do it one more time. OK. Then we're going to go over to the results tab. So there's now a results tab on this node. I'm going to click to it. And you're going to notice, I've submitted this form, I think I'm up to five times already, but we're only seeing the two submissions that were attached to this node. So now you've just created a system, like we're recording records related to this. Event registration is the best example of this, because imagine if this was an event, you could have the same registration form attached to multiple events on your site, tracking into one master spreadsheet, but you have these individual spreadsheets for your events. You can purge just the submissions for this event, or when you delete the event. Um, and you get all the behaviors tied to it, which is exporting, clearing, logging. I keep going. We are good on time, which is nice. We're slowly, we're getting there. There's a lot of material here. Um, so, how can you extend the, the web form module? Well, there are add-ons for that. Um, add-ons are Drupal modules and projects that extend and provide additional functionality to the web form module. And, and I'm not getting into a lot of techno, but the web form just extends Drupal's form API. So any module that helps Drupal's form API can help the web form module. Um, there are a lot of useful add-ons available and more to come. And in the module, you can get a list of add-ons in one of the main tabs. And on Drupal.org, there's an add-ons page that's tracking these modules. And these are kind of the breakdown of the types of add-ons. And actually, I, I think I ordered this by priority because once again, spam protection's got to be the most, you have to install that. There's nice, there's a client-side validation module which does nice enhancements to the user experience, so it's um, JavaScript-based. You can actually get extra elements to add to your form. The integrations is a nice piece where you can, if you're trying to work with 
a lot of different systems. Like even if you want to send um, notifications to Slack, there's a module for that. Mm. I should emphasize the mail part of this is the Webflow module does support HTML email without a problem, but doesn't support file attachments. So if you need to do send file attachments with your emails, you're going to have to install one of the few, you know, the mail system module or the SMT module or the Swift mail module. And the, the right-hand column is a lot of more specific stuff for developers where you can get REST API integration, configuration, migrate, um, some better multilingual support. And on development, there's one or two tools that I'm going to mention. And to reemphasize, these are the two big spam protection modules, Honeypot and Capture. You can use both, and you probably won't get any spam if you use both. Um, the client-side validation module I just like because it, you turn it on and all your forms just work better. All your forms, not just web forms on your site. It just adds client, really clean client-side validation to your forms, not kind of the awkward HTML5 validation. Um, for site builders, it's important. IMC just helps with, if you're going to do stuff with like the Im those cute kittens and you need to manage those images, IMC makes that a lot easier and possible. Um, and these last two are really important. If you need custom reports, like a, a table of all your submissions and custom tracking, you should use the web form views module. It makes it very flexible. Um, and you can do custom filtering. And someone's finally built out the web form analysis module, which will give you charts and stats on your submissions as they're coming through. And so for developers, there is a migration module I honestly can't tell you the status of it because it, migration is a tricky thing. People do it and then they walk away from it. And so there's no one who's heading up the lead of the web form migrate. Someone did contribute a module, but I can't really tell you what the status is. Um, with those custom composite elements, someone built a great, I don't know if he's in the room, Richard, um, a module where you can build your own custom composites and they're completely reusable. So you could define this one element and reuse it throughout your site. These are really helpful if you're building complex applications. Everyone knows the develop module, so I don't really, that's a developer tool module. I don't really need to go too heavily, but the mail log module, because these forms send emails, the mail log module, if you turn this on, will intercept those emails and not send them while you're working on your forms. It's very helpful to not accidentally spam a lot of people. Um, I use it on basically every project in the developer environment. Um, and so this is important with these add-ons, is to say, you know, the Drupal's community ability to provide contributor modules and, and the power core is the real power behind the web form module. I mean, web form module extends course form API, which is outstanding, well-developed code. And, and you know, this is Drupal. This is what's building the web form module and everything that we've seen here. And I, I'm starting, some people know where I'm going with this. It's really not should you contribute, but how can you contribute to Drupal, the community, the web form module? And this is the question, how can you contribute to the web form module in Drupal? And there's the contribute module for that. And this is a tricky one. Okay, so the contribute module is something I just started making a dependency to the web form module and encourages people to join the Drupal community, become a member of the Drupal Association and contribute to Drupal. And this is just a quick you know, demo of what it does. And here's the problem right now. You are not the people I'm trying, I, I need to emphasize, you, the people in this room, are not the people I'm trying to reach with this module. It's the people that don't understand how Drupal works, that install it, and don't get all the work that people put in for free to build this system. And the goal of this module is just to get people more familiar with that, to make them understand how open source works, and to get them comfortable with it. On a very personal note, I didn't start contributing to Drupal for five years. After. I was using it for many projects. I didn't become an active contributor. And I didn't even know what the Drupal Association was until maybe three years into using Drupal. And the goal of this model is just to get people aware, gain some awareness. I'm not expecting people to suddenly become major core contributors. Uh, on a very personal note, I think everyone should be a member of the Drupal Association. It's kind of a no-brainer to me, and it's a shocking thing in our community that it's such a low membership in relationship to the number of installs in the Drupal community. And once again, I think it's really, I'm preaching to the choir here because you're at a conference, a Drupal Association sponsored it, you heard it this morning. Um, but this is how we're going to build our community. We have to have a central location where we fund, <laughs> have them promoting our software, building the infrastructure, and it's like $15 a year to join. Um, I'm not going to go any further on that. So where can you get help and learn more? 
Well, there's more information about that. And this is my info, uh, jrockwoods.com. I have my blog post. You can reach out to me on drupal.org. It's jrockwoods, and I'm also on Twitter. And in the web form module, there's documentation available on drupal.org. Drupal Answers is a great place to get general help and ask questions for everything related to Drupal. And if you find bugs or problems or have suggestions, you can use the web form issue queue. And with the community, I do want to emphasize the Drupal Association and, and becoming a member. And these two resources are very helpful. I mean, I think it helps just to get a beat on what's going on in the Drupal community. And I'm just bringing up Drupal Planet and the newsletter. That's the blog and the email newsletter. And are we done yet? Uh, yes. And we've got 15 minutes, which is great. I'll take some questions. And that's Ralph. He says hi. All right, thank you. Hi, uh, I just installed it for the first time uh, yesterday and I was playing with it. Uh, we, I, I, I put, added the module through the uh, Content type and mm -hmm. the articles. Uh, will the uh, the node will if if we set up the node will that uh, uh, put the separate out the uh, submissions the same same way? Yeah, okay. web form nodes. That's, that's why there's a dedicated web form node because it really does start funneling the submissions. Mm -hmm. If you place a web form on a block and it's on every page of site, it's kind of, it's tracking, but it's not giving you that separation. When you go to export, you can tweak things and say, I want to only pull this data from there. And the web form views module then opens up a whole huge array of possibilities. I'm gonna go from bottom to the top. Any questions? So on the uh, templates, to try to understand, can those, in other words, if you activate them, you can reuse the same form you've built on like say a particular node type and I just you, you load it each time? Well the web form templates are just like think of it like copy you have a form you like and it just makes it it gives you a a user experience where someone can just copy that form intuitively. It's just a copy. Okay. So the web form nodes gets into reuse where you, you can take the same form. So you can take the same form and place it on multiple nodes and I mean, I'm just showing you that you're collecting data for that specific node, but because you're on different nodes, you can actually, if you're a developer, you can write code to change subtle behaviors to the physical form with a form alter. You can hide and show certain elements. You can get into a lot of nuances. Um, it really addresses something I saw in D7. I was taking the same form, copying it 100 times and placing it on 100 events, and it was getting kind of out of hand. So it addresses that. It addresses that, yeah. The goal, you should, if you're building real, if you're going to have hundreds of forms, you should really think about reuse. Another note, I'm not getting heavily into it, but custom reusable elements and custom composites start to get some reuse. So you can abstract some business logic into like, here's a set of elements. Like the example would be if you have, I work for a hospital, and they need to get patient information. We have a dedicated patient information element that then could be placed on multiple forms, and it's a central, well-defined element to get that data. Scott? So, I've been working with MongoDB, I'm just going into Drupal as a separate database. Mm -hmm. and the next step is to make it so we can have forms that pulls the field names, the labels, and the values from MongoDB. Mm -hmm. What's the best way of doing that, starting that out? Well, the, the handlers are these abstract plugins, and I mean, I have a local dev environment, so. And we have time, I mean, so we have 10 minutes here, so I'm gonna you know, try not to spend more than a minute or two per question, but I have a local dev environment, so, and by the way, this is, I try to avoid being developer specific, but you asked a question, so I will be a little developer specific. Just a little, not a lot. Well, the good part is, when I build it, it'll be out there for all the people. Yeah, so handlers are plugins. So, uh, you know, this handler basically, if I was walking you through it, I'd rather go to this one, ready? If I go to the interface, this is why Drupal 8 is awesome. If I go to the interface, and I hit Control 7, you get this interface of all the methods that you have. So the handlers basically let you hook into any step of a web form as it's being processed. When it starts getting created, you can auto fill out, you can define custom settings. So if you're integrating with an external database, you can control, does it preload? Does it look at the user account? Is there a custom parameter passed? And when they hit submit, you could take that data. You, you know, you have, 
the entire stack of how a form works, which is, kind of, I mean, it's building the form, rendering the form, validating the form, and then submitting the form. And then you even get to the confirmation page and you can then control the confirmation page from your third party. And I didn't show this in a remote post, the remote post. You can actually remote post and capture a confirmation number and store that into your database. So you have full control over this, the, the way the data is going. Let's take a part. Is this, does this only work for browser-based, or could you use Drupal's API into a React mobile app? That's like down. So right now, the web form module is tightly coupled to form API and rendering forms using form API. It seems obvious that the next, so we're going to, my goal is to get 5.x out by DrupalCon and be, you know, there's the first release of it, stable. And then we're going to start exploring headless, it's really getting into headless forms and using the form builder aspect to build your forms with them rendering with different systems. It's hard. Decouple forms is a really tricky one because I have a lot of great features because it, I'm using Drupal. It was being big because I solved some of those problems. Yeah. Other questions? I'm going to go, uh, I'll come back to you. I'm to, I'm, I figured the best way you go up and down yeah. and then. Yeah, you mentioned you were interfacing into Salesforce. Are you using the Salesforce suite? To do that? No, Salesforce suite is an amazing module. Um, that, I, I mean, I'm basically going to tell you if you're doing heavy Salesforce and you need a great front end, use the Salesforce suite module, but that uses the entity system. and. Um, that is, let's put it this way, if you want an amazing like integration, like your your site is a front end to your <laughs> your site is a front end to your Salesforce back end, you use the Salesforce suite and you get amazing your users are coming from Salesforce, that data synchronized, your nodes are synchronized, your content synchronized. Um, the web form model provides like a quick the thing it does, it's different than what you know, like entities and contact forms, it gives you complete flexibility of the form so you can build a really beautiful customized multi-step form that is a front end to some sort of Salesforce back end. Mm -hmm. But it's really like one-offs. You know, like I use it for an appointment form where people are re requesting an appointment. It's a beautiful form. They hit submit. And I have custom code, actually, that just Keep in mind, the, dat the data you're getting from a, a web form is so simple. It's like a very simple array of name value pairs. If it's a little complex. It's name, a nested array. And then you can easily map that data to your Salesforce system or any CRM. That's, a lot of people are just doing custom one-off modules too for their projects. Um, and, all right, okay. and I'll go back up. Um, real quick, I'm trying to think of a, of a possibility of understanding if, if this is possible for web forms. Right? Mm -hmm. Everything's that possible. I, that's a great answer. Um, Come on. The, the, the thought I had was if, say, if, um, so I, if, 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 if I set up a form for a user to fill in, like journalizing their, their practice time, mm -hmm. Is it possible to, for them to have like a time element, like when they, they start to filling out the form <coughs> and then they're done with it and they save that value into a web form? Yes, I mean, one th like, yes, absolutely. Uh, okay. Something I, like you reminded me of something, like I think people saw this hint that I have this, uh, here, I'll just show it because it's kind of like, shows you cool little nuances you can get to. I'm trapped in my eye. All right. So, if I go to my example, style guide. What I like about this demo is, where's that map? This is geolocation turned on, and it just figured out where we're, what's going on right here. And you can hide this and just have tracking, geolocation tracking going on in the background of where someone's submitting form, which is similar to a timer. It's like capturing metadata as someone's filling out the form. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm like thinking, like say, say someone's learning how to play an instrument, and they're just practicing their practice time. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and so they're basically they just you know they, they would sign into their site and say I'm starting yeah. like, this is what I'm like. the, the web form assembles the stuff that they're going to practice and then they just start practicing time and then it would output the web form as a result. Yeah, I mean it's very yeah it's very easy to open up those tracking. I mean tracking is kind of an amazing. We're not doing as there's going to be a lot more going on with web form tracking. I can just see that. I mean you're bringing up tracking and I'm like Google Analytics and I mean I actually have. For this appointment form we have, I track every single click that someone makes on the form, and it goes into a Google stack. And it was it's, it's just custom JavaScript, but it's like 20 lines of JavaScript that's basically tracking every single behavior on a form, so they can get some metrics on <coughs> drop-off rates and stuff like that. Other questions going Thank up you. to the top? Uh, does WebForm expose anything to field API that like things outside of WebForm can use? Um, no would be the short answer. 
Um, so the Webflow module, the field API and Webflow module, they're, they're slightly different, they're different APIs. They're both using form API to render form elements. But the, the challenge with field API is there's a perform, field API does amazing things. It's built, it's designed to build websites and massive content systems. But it's not a good, a quick way to collect a lot of data. There's a performance hit, breaks everything down into individual tables. So the Webflow model is storing it differently. It's using a, the specific thing, it's using an entity attribute value system. It's a one table that stores all this data and it's just broken down. Um, with field API integration, you know, there's this ability with the web forms to be completely decut, like you don't have to use entity attribute values system. You can turn that off and you can push it to a CRM or you can push it to field API. I have seen people do it. I haven't built a UI for that. So the idea is you build a web form and it's actually sitting in front of a node and it becomes the form of the node. And that, when you hit submit, it pushes that data into the node. And when someone comes back to it, it could be in the front end. It's very, very easy to do. I mean, from a programmatic, from programmatically, it's easy. To build a UI is really time consuming that I haven't had the time to do. Where you're basically looking at your web form and mapping your web form elements to your fields in your system. Is that a good enough answer? Um, if you have any, yeah. I can elaborate on any aspect of that. Basically, if you wanted to do something like that, would just be writing a handler? Yep. Just right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, the most common one is someone has a, um, a better example would be someone fills out an event registration form and you need to create a user account. That's like the most common handler I've seen people write custom handlers for. Because they've got a username, they've got a name, an email address. They don't even want to give them a password. You know, like they'll generate a password, but they just want to get them into the user table so they can come back to it. And yeah, people write a handler. There's actually some on GitHub that show examples of it. First, Jacob, thanks so much for coming out today. Okay, thanks, Chris. Um, I'd like, the uh, question is, so suppose we want uh, data to get to some, some CRM, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason we want to post to it, what would be an effective way of periodically sucking, or what can you think of as an effective way of periodically coming to the Drupal and sucking the data out? Back, wait, getting it out of the CRM, back into Drupal? No, from the CRM, no, out of Drupal into the CRM without posting from it. So we're reaching in and out. Uh, Just curious. I, my, my, my old response would be cron and you know, I have a cron task, and now personally, I'm like cron just is sucking. And it's not cron is a system in the background where it runs, and it start, you can have automated tasks. The problem is cron runs all your automated tasks at once, and if one of those tasks fail, all your automated tasks fail, and this is just not working for me anymore. So it's probably building a queue and trying to figure out how, it, you know, having it run in the background. Um, Honestly, if someone pushed me on a, like if it's a high performance system for stuff like that, I might write it outside of Drupal. Because the, the storage mechanism for storing web form submissions is so basic that you could write it in Node.js and push data in a second. You might have misunderstood the question. Well, oh. You've already collected data and now, now we want to retrieve it simply from Drupal in an organized manner, like over some kind of web API. Well, there's a, there's a REST API module for web form submissions. You can get each oh. submission out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what you needed? Oh, I'm sorry. I could, you got me it's ranting it's on cron. Yeah, no, there's a, a web form REST module. Um, there's actually this cool little API tab. Let's see if I can get to it. If I hit test, this is, okay, I got to back out of this because I'm going to do the kitchen sink form in an API, and that's a horrible demo. If you go to the test tab, there's an API sub task. And this is showing you kind of how you would write PHP code to push data to and from. It gives you a quick example of just kind of, there's like these static methods on the web form submission so you can push value. It has, it's really just two methods. It's a validate method and a submit method. And it just makes it possible to have that integration. Other questions? We're good on time, so. Well, thank you. <laughs>